Let's add a custom recipe type to our block entity. Even more topics available in the 121 Minecraft modding courses, now with energy and fluid handling for block entities next to many other awesome topics. Alright, we found us back in Taylor once more, and in this tutorial we'll be adding a custom recipe type to our growth chamber block entity, meaning we will no longer have the crafting be hard-coded in this case, so we will not only be able to craft six pink garnets from one raw pink garnet, but actually a whole host of different things, all defined via custom recipe JSON files. But we'll see this in a second. First of all, in the tutorial mod package, we're gonna make a new package called recipe. Here, we'll need three new Java classes. As per usual, all of the code is available to you down below. The first one is the mod recipes class. The second one is going to be the growth chamber recipe. And we have another one, and that's gonna be the growth chamber recipe input class and that's also the one we'll start with like i said you can find all of the code linked down below in the description in the github repository i highly recommend you take a look at this specifically with the recipe class because we will be copying over a couple of things but not to worry first of all the recipe input this will be a record over here and then this is going to have an item stack this is going to be the item stack actually which is going to be the input and it will implement the recipe input interface We'll hover over this to implement the two methods we need. And then that's basically it in the get size. Well, we only have one input in this case. And here we're going to return the input over here that we put into the constructor in this case. And that's pretty much it for the input over here. You can take a look at the recipe input. Press control H and there is a single stack recipe input that basically works the same way. However, I have had some issues with this. So I just made a custom one over here. It might also that the issues have been resolved because this change happened in, I believe, 120. It might also happen in 1.21. I don't even know. I can't even keep all of the updates straight anymore. So, so regardless of this, though, basically the recipe input is used for what we put into our custom block entity, right? So whatever this item is right here, this input, that is what we've put into our input slot in the block entity. That's basically the first thing you sort of have to keep in your mind. And the recipe itself, well, let's just first of all write this out and then I'll explain what this is. This is also going to be a record and it's going to have an ingredient. This is going to be our input item and it will also have an item stack, which is going to be our output. Now this one will implement the recipe interface. So this one over here of type growth recipe growth chamber recipe input. We can then hover over this to implement quite a few methods over here. And there we go. First things first, we want to override the get ingredients method where we will simply make a custom default list. It's, it looks kind of like this. So we make a default list over here. where just an empty one, basically. We will then add the input item and then return that list. We will need this later down the line, but just adding this, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then the question is, okay, what the frick is this recipe uh, class over here or this record? What is this even like sort of showing? Well, the idea is as follows. We of course want to read in JSON files, right? Read in recipe JSON files, right? That's the idea. And now those will be turned into a new growth chamber recipe over here. So this will be turned into what an instance of this particular class. Now, this class holds the input item. So let's say we make a recipe where you put in a stick and you get out a an end rod, right? Let's just say for the sake of argument. Then those two things will be saved in the ingredient and the item stack over here. That's the whole idea, right? So that is what we're going to read in. And this will then be compared, right? So the ingredient over here will be compared with the input, which obviously only has whatever we put into the inventory. And if those two match, let's go. We can craft something, get the output and put that into the output slot, let's say. Now, this matching happens in the matches method. This is one of the most important methods over here, because if this returns true, then we have found that the recipe input given right here matches whatever, like any of our recipes, right? So obviously there's, you know, we can have like a thousand recipes for the growth chamber. That's totally fine. However, of course, it needs to find the one that actually matches with the recipe input. That's the whole idea. Now in this matches method, first of all, we need to call, make an if statement world that is client and then we want to return a false. This is needed so that it doesn't crash when we have this on the server, if I recall correctly. Otherwise, it will crash over here. So that's why we have this. And then the second thing is it's actually quite simple. So in our case, because we only have one input and one output, it's very straightforward that we simply say input item dot test input dot get stack in slot zero. So the idea here is that take the input item of this particular recipe, right? So let's say the JSON file says 
that we can make a stick into a an end rod, right? We're taking that, right? So this is now a stick over here and we're testing if this is the same as the input that we have inside of our block entity. If, let's say, the block entity has redstone in it, well, all of a sudden, this is false, obviously, because this, that's not a stick. However, if we do put a stick in there, all of a sudden, this is true, and we can then craft the output. That's the whole idea when it comes to the recipe in this case. The craft method will simply return the get output.copy. The fits will simply be true. The result is simply going to be the output. And then the serializer and the get type, we're going to have deliberate errors over here because we can't actually add those just yet. We're going to add those in a second when we actually register both the type as well as the serializer. When it comes to the serializer, this is going to be a static class within this class. And I will copy over the entire thing, but I will explain after we copy this over. There should, in theory, be no errors within this class. And you can see this implements the recipe serializer of type growth chamber recipe. And it has two fields. The first one is the map codec of growth chamber recipe called codec. And then a packet codec over here called stream codec. Those two are returned in the codec and the packet codec methods. Now the question is, what the frick is this? Highest level overview. A codec is used to read in and write out uh, certain things. So basically it is used for reading in JSON files and writing to JSON files. Now this map codec over here, basically what it does is it looks inside of the JSON file, right? It let's say you have a JSON file and you say, hey, you read this JSON file with this codec. Highest level overview once again. And it says, okay, look for an ingredient field inside of the JSON file, right? So in the JSON file, it reads ingredient. And it then says, okay, whatever you find there, that is the input item. And then the same thing goes when you find the result written inside of the JSON file, that is the output. And then with those two things that you've read in, you simply are going to create a new growth chamber recipe. That's the idea of a codec, basically. And the stream codec, similar idea. The difference here is just that instead of reading in and writing to JSON files, the stream codec is used for the networking. So basically synchronization between server and client. And now that we have this, we can go to our mod recipes class and actually register both the serializer as well as the type. This is more straightforward than one might think. This is a public static final recipe serializer of type growth chamber recipe. I call this the growth underscore chamber underscore serializer. There we go. Equal to registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry, super important. So click on the correct one, tap to auto complete it, and then that, and then register. This is going to be regi for registries dot recipe serializer with an identifier of tutorial mod dot mod ID. We call this the growth underscore chamber. Second parameter, or actually third parameter here, is then a new growth chamber recipe dot serializer. And then there it is. Now let's just take a look. Okay, this is of course not quite right. The formatting is off a little bit. There we go. That is going to be fine. Highly recommended. Also, you can check out the code down in the description below in the GitHub repository if there is any issues over here. The second one is a public static final recipe type, growth chamber recipe. Once again, this is the growth underscore cham chamber underscore type equal to, once again, the registry a register method with registries dot this is for recipe type this time with once again an identifier of tutorial mod mod ID. And this is the growth underscore chamber again. The first closing parenthesis will then have a new recipe type of type growth chamber. You can see that this is an anonymous class. And here we're going to overwrite the to string method. We will simply return growth chamber. And of course, we need to close this with a semicolon. We, uh, this, this formatting is all sorts of crazy. Uh, there we go. That's going to be that. And then that's going to be that. And there you go. And that is going to be the thing done. Nice. And then finally, we have a public static void register recipes method, which once again here calls tutorial mod.logger in this case, which is not necessary. However, I do like it. That's just a personal preference here in this case. So it's going to be calling register uh, reg recipes, registering custom recipes for mod ID. And of course, the, this method over here has to be called very importantly, in your own initialize method, so mod recipes dot register recipes. And with this, the recipe would be registered. Right now, the recipes are registered, meaning that we could read them in. However, we're not using them because, of course, we have to use them inside of the block entity. Now, the cool thing is because we have the, made the tick method so adaptable, let's say, it is super easy to change this. The first method to change is the has recipe method. This time, well, I mean, we don't really need to look for an input. The input we're going to handle in a little bit of a different way. 
uh, and then the output will change in a second. But first of all, what we're going to have in the has recipe method is an optional of type recipe entry of type growth chamber recipe. This is going to be our recipe equal to the get current recipe method, which as you can see, doesn't exist just yet. But we're going to just going to hover over this to actually create that method. And that is going to return the following. We're going to return this dot get world dot get recipe manager dot get first match. So we're getting the first match of a particular type. And that's going to be the growth chamber recipe type. And we have to pass in a new growth chamber recipe input. So this is the input that it basically matches it to, right? That it uh, compares it to. And that's going to be inventory dot get input slot, basically getting the item from the input slot. And we also have to pass in the world over here. And that is the get current recipe method. And that's awesome because we have an option over here. We can simply say if recipe dot is empty, then we want to return a false because that means that no recipe has been found of this particular type matching the input that we've given it. However, as soon as we are not or, you know, like not going into the if statement, that means that down here we do have a recipe. So we can say recipe dot get dot value dot output. And that means that we have the output found over here and we can say let's freaking go. And because we don't the input is basically checked for right here, we can delete the first thing in the in the return and the insert amount into and the insert item into both still work with their logic because they just expected, you know, a number and an item stack and that we already have given it. Awesome. So the change here then is in the craft item method, obviously, where the output is no longer. Well, I mean, the item stack over here, like a, an actual item stack. Here We also want an optional of recipe entry of type growth chamber recipe. I'm going to call this the recipe again, get current recipe. And then, well, we basically can do exactly the same thing. Instead of the output hard coding it, we say recipe dot get that value that output. And that is it. We don't even need to check whether or not this is a thing because we know that the craft item method is only ever called when has recipe is true. So therefore we know that there is a recipe available to us here and that is it. One thing that's quite important here is that currently we are only subtracting one from the input slot. It could be the case that you can define inside of your custom recipe how many you want to, well, basically deduct over here. I d I'm unsure because you can get the recipe dot dot value and then you can i guess get the ingredients over here get zero and then that gives you an ingredient but you would have to get the item stack so it's a little more complicated because it's an ingredient instead of an item stack so i'm unsure if you can actually properly and easily define how many uh well how many things you want to subtract there you probably can however i just wanted to note this that this is currently hard coded but in theory you could change it just note that if you you know actually add this to the to the custom recipe, it's not going to do anything because then you would have to change it in the block entity as well. But that is basically the idea. Instead of the recipe class, we can then do mod recipes dot growth chamber serializer and in the get type method here, mod recipes growth chamber type. And that is it. And then the last step is just the two recipe classes or the two recipe JSON files in the resources data tutorial mod in the recipe folder. And you can see these are the two JSON files in this case, put in put in a stick, get out an end rod here, put in raw pink garnet, get 16 pink garnets out. And that is it. And we can, of course, do all sorts of crazy other recipes. Let's just do another one. Let's just do, I don't even know, coal from growth chamber. And then, you know, we get coal. And what do we have to put in there? I don't even freaking know. Let's do a feather. I mean, I don't, you know, whatever it might be, you can put whatever you want in here and it's going to all work, which is super freaking cool. And because we've done everything that we need, let's jump into the game and see if it works. Oh, I found some back in Minecraft and let's take a look. Let's say I take a feather and look at this. Of course, it crafts something. And what does it craft? A piece of coal. Absolutely fantastic. The raw pink garnet also works and it's got a 16 pink garnet. And finally, the stick over here will yield us an end rod, which is exactly what we want to see. Absolutely freaking amazing. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This is super freaking cool. And that is custom recipe type added to your block entity. Awesome. As previously said, all of the code is available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository, but that's going to be it for this tutorial here. Next time in this video, we'll add REI compatibility to our mod. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.